Hello and welcome back to Chronicles of Enigma, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. We truly appreciate it, and it really helps out the channel. Thank you. Today we will be discussing a little-known script of Rungo Rungo. It's the sole indigenous script of the Oceania that we have discovered thus far, exclusively to a single location situated at the heart of the Pacific Ocean, over a thousand miles away from any continent. It has been established that the initial migrants to Easter Island were intentional, transporting essential elements, such as people, plants, and animals, to establish a sustainable colony. Although most people believe that Rongo Rongo was imported with the first inhabitants of the island, no exact representation of the full script exists anywhere in the world, leading me to believe that it evolved on the island, with influences from much earlier scripts from various civilizations. The lingering question persists. What is the true origin of Rongo Rongo? According to tradition, the initial monarch is said to have brought 67 wooden tablets with him to the island, upon first landing. Over the years, the number of tablets grew considerably, with one of the later chiefs reportedly possessing over several hundred. According to research, the first settlement began around 900 AD, or possibly a few centuries earlier. The construction of the Moai statues was in full swing by 1200 AD, and the collapse occurred around 1500 AD due to lack of natural resources. Local accounts suggest that the original glyphs introduced by the earliest immigrants were inscribed on banana plant paper. However, for enhanced document preservation, it is said that they transitioned to using wood. There are a few petroglyphs engraved in stone still visible on the island. Early researchers proposed that the glyphs were engraved using a piece of obsidian, while others suggest it may have been catfish teeth as an instrument for engraving. The Austronesian Polynesian, the initial settlers of the island, are thought to have migrated from the Marquesas Islands in the west. At a certain point in time, the island sustained a relatively sophisticated and intricate civilization. It is now established that between approximately 3000 and 1000 BC, speakers of the Austronesian languages dispersed across island Southeast Asia, likely originating from Taiwan. In the mid-2nd millennium BC, the distinctive Lapita culture emerged abruptly in northwest Melanesia. Within a brief span of three to four centuries, from about 1300 to 900 BC, the Lapita culture expanded 6,000 kilometers further eastward from the Bismarck Archipelago, reaching as far as Tonga and Samoa. It was in this region that the unique Polynesian culture took shape. The suggested settlement pattern indicates that the Polynesians migrated from the Samoan Islands into eastern Polynesia, encompassing the Marquesas and the Society Islands, then the Hawaiian Islands, and then finally Easter Island. Despite the fact that Europeans officially encountered Easter Island in 1722, Evidence indicates that the Pacific had been navigated successfully for a millennia prior to their arrival. The initial documentation of Rongo Rongo dates back to 1864, when Eugene Erod recorded his observations, spending nine months on Easter Island while evangelizing the residents. He chronicled his stay, including the discovery of the tablets that year. He wrote that in every hut, one finds wooden tablets or sticks covered in several sort of hieroglyphic characters. They are depictions of animals unknown on the island, which the natives draw with sharp stones. Each figure has its own name, but the scant attention they pay to these tablets leads me to think that these characters, remnants of some primitive rating, are now for them a habitual practice which they keep 
without seeking its meaning. In 1868, the Bishop of Tahiti was presented with a gift from a recent Catholic convert on Easter Island. The gift comprised a lengthy strand of human hair, possibly a fishing line, tightly wound around a small wooden board, adorned with hieroglyphic writing. Astonished by the discovery, the bishop corresponded with the father on Easter Island, urging him to gather all the remnants and tablets that individuals had capable of translating them. Unfortunately, Father Russell could only retrieve a limited number of tablets, and the islanders could not reach a consensus on how to interpret them. The fate of the hundreds of tablets observed just four years earlier remain a subject of speculation. Dr. Stephen Chavet was quoted as saying, The bishop questioned the Rapa Nui wise men, the son of the wise men who said that he himself had begun the requisite studies and knew how to carve the characters with a small shark's tooth. He said that there was nobody left on the island who knew how to read the characters since the Peruvians had brought about the deaths of all the wise men, and thus the pieces of wood were no longer of any interest to the natives who burned them as firewood or wound their fishing lines around them. Another researcher, A. Pinart, also saw some in 1877. He was not able to acquire these tablets because the natives were using them for reels for their fishing lines. In December of 1862, Easter Island fell victim to the Peruvian slave raiders. The ensuing months witnessed a series of brutal abductions leading to the capture or death of approximately 1,500 men and women, constituting about half of the island's po population. The practice of writing was severely disrupted during this period, as the Peruvian slave raiders abducted all skilled individuals in the art of writing. The eventual vanishing of the ancient wooden tablets likely stems from their sacred nature. As the islanders concealed them from the European settlers, presumably due to the missionaries deeming the ceremonial documents as ideolatrous artifacts, the indigenous people consistently claimed that the missionaries had forbid them from possessing the tablets and even persuaded them to destroy these items, labeling them as works of the devil. The Swede de Greno, who arrived around 1870 on Easter Island, conveyed the following. Soon after the Catholic mission was established on the island, the missionaries persuaded many of the people to consume by fire all the tablets in their possession telling them that they were but heathen records and that the possession of them would have the tendency to attach them to their heathenism and prevent their thorough conversion to the new religion and the consequently saving their souls. Furthermore, Catherine Rutledge, the acclaimed explorer of Easter Island, was informed by a local resident that he owned a significant quantity of the tablets, all of which he disposed of based on the counsel of the missionaries. Subsequently, another individual fashioned a boat from these discarded tablets. In 1932, Wilhelm de Vesey became the first academic to propose a connection between the Rungo Rungo and Indus script of the Indus Valley Civilization in India. He asserted that as many as 40 Rungo Rungo symbols corresponded to symbols in the Indian script. The idea was entertained and debated until the advent of the radiocarbon dating, which placed the Indus Valley culture between approximately 3300 and 1900 BC, effectively establishing a chronological gap of over 2000 years between the two cultures. However, recent research has reignited the debate as the discovery of the Indus Valley DNA in Australian Aborigines suggests potential contact between the two cultures around 2000 BC. A recent study led by Irina Pugach from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology appears to have clarified the issue. It suggests that around 4,000 years before the arrival of Europeans, a group of Indian adventurers from the Indus Valley Civilization decided to establish a home in what is today Australia. Unlike the later European settlers, 
these early inhabitants integrated into the local population. Notably, they introduced technological advancements in one of Australia's most iconic animals, the dingo. Maybe the dingo ate your baby. The Pacific settlement unfolded through a sequence of expansion phases and settlement breaks, originating in Taiwan approximately 5,200 years ago. The Austronesians exhibited a pattern of pausing for about a thousand years before entering the Philippines. Subsequently, they rapidly transversed the 7,000 kilometer stretch from the Philippines to the Polynesia in less than a thousand years. After establishing settlements in Fiji, Samoa, and Tonga, the Austronesians underwent another thousand year pause before extending their reach deeper into the Polynesia eventually reaching as far as New Zealand, Hawaii, and, and Easter Island. The ongoing exploration and settlement of the Pacific Islands during this period opened up a prospect of perpetuating the traditions associated with the sacred script. The enduring existence of languages exemplified by Egyptian hieroglyphics, Chinese logograms, and Sumerian cuneiform attest to the lasting nature of written communication. Throughout history, numerous scripts like the Hebraic Torah, still revered today, were deemed sacred. These sacred texts were meticulously transmitted over a millennia without deviation. This notion gained support from the identification of recurring scripts on multiple surviving Rongo Rongo tablets. Furthermore, recent epigraphic investigators have not only unveiled additional resemblances between the two scripts, but more notably identified similarities and groupings of characters in both scripts. This discovery cannot be dismissed as mere coincidence. It leaves us with a mystery that although improbable, seems to suggest that a thread of connection between the two cultures. Recent studies indicate that the native Australian population possesses the Indus Valley genome, believed to have arrived around 3000 BC. This serves as evidence that the Indus Valley Dravidians were adept navigators exploring the fringes of the Pacific Ocean precisely during the period when linguistics research suggests an Austronesian expansion transpired, moving from the west to the east across the Pacific and reaching Easter Island around 1000 BC. The Indus Valley civilization is recognized for its extensive interactions and trade networks spanning throughout the ancient world. Evidence of a strong association with the Sumerians is established through the widespread presence of Harappan seals and cubical weight measurements in Mesopotamian urban areas. Notably, it is intriguing that no artifacts from Mesopotamia have been discovered in an Indus Valley context. While it's not being proposed that explorers from the Indus Valley civilization reached Easter Island themselves, there is evidence that they had initiated maritime exploration, reaching Australia approximately 4,000 years ago. This subsequent exploration and colonization of the Pacific Islands by Austronesian Polynesian navigators provide a plausible foundation for endorsing the theory that Indus Valley script, or a derivative from it, was gradually transported to Easter Island. The script was likely preserved over time by elders who regarded it as sacred. The initial findings in 1932 by Wilhelm de Hevesy proposed that as many as 40 Rongo Rongo symbols corresponded to symbols in the script from India. Through subsequent independent research, including the identification of similar variations in both scripts, this number has increased. The only apparent visual distinction between the two scripts is that one is presented in a stick form while the other takes a more rounded form. This divergence, however, seems a plausible development on an isolated island over a period of time, more than a thousand years. As discussed earlier, the Indus Valley culture 
was navigating the Australian oceans simultaneously with the initial colonization of the Pacific Islands. A noteworthy observation in connection with this topic is the identification that among the remaining 26 instances of Rongo Rongo, comparable segments of the text are repeated across several samples. This suggests a form of ritual record keeping, analogous to the oral tradition that recorded origin myths, ancestral genealogies, or other crucial knowledge such as astronomical cycles, both of which were suspected within the surviving Rongo Rongo samples. The recurrent use of script supports the notion that the numerous Rongo Rongo boards reported as being found in every hut were likely reproductions or variations of earlier versions. This practice might resemble the way holy books are preserved in contemporary homes today. While the conventional emphasis in this discourse often centers around the unlikelihood of a connection between the Indus Valley culture, there have been multiple accounts of ancient scripts exhibiting similarities to both Rongo Rongo and the Indus Valley script. Various other instances of ancient scripts have demonstrated notable resemblances to both Indus Valley script and Rongo Rongo, as illustrated by the following examples, such as the Inga stone in Brazil. The Shang people of China, who lived over 3,000 years ago, etched characters in pictures onto bones. Shang writing is also known as Oracle Bone Script. The Sri Lanka stone bench, discovered three kilometers off the coast of Gatawaya at the site of a 2,000-year-old shipwreck. It is noticeable that the characters on the Gatawaya stone show closer similarity to Rongo Rongo in that of Indus Valley script. More recently, a tablet was discovered at Gobekli Tempe, suggest an earlier and more shared origin for the set of symbols found in the Indus Valley script. I find it very interesting that all over the world we find these same symbols. Maybe our ancient ancestors were more mobile than we ever imagined. Recent research has indicated the presence of a shared set of symbols dating back to the Paleolithic era, which can be observed to have an evolved into proto-alphabets within the prehistoric cultures globally. While the meanings of these early individual symbols remain speculative, their eventual transformation into the modern alphabets is now widely acknowledged. A resemblance between many of the Paleolithic characters in both the Indus Valley and Rongo Rongo scripts can be identified. Undoubtedly, the resemblance between two scripts does not inherently imply a common origin. Nevertheless, and illustrated by the following aforementioned examples, there is now substantial evidence supporting the possibility of such a connection. Despite the potential fragility of this link, it remains the most plausible explanation for the striking similarities between the Indus Valley and the Easter Island scripts. In the absence of a more credible alternative, we are left with a limited set of possibilities to account for such a connection. These possibilities include the script evolved autonomously and spontaneous in each respective location, the script was initially brought to Easter Island due to its preserved sacred nature, the script was initially brought to Easter Island because it was regarded as a sacred site, or the Easter Island script originated from unidentified and subsequent source contradicting their mythology. What do you think the similarities between all of these ancient texts are? Coincidence? Explorer sharing knowledge? UFOs? Let me know down in the comments what you think. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching, and please stay tuned for the next available episode. This has been a Chronicles of Enigma production.